This is part 8 of renovating a vintage horizontal twin cylinder model steam engine and I'm covering the machining of the flywheels or the remachining of the flywheels. Both of these flywheels over the years have got badly damaged. This is the first one I'm looking at. Initially using a piece of sandpaper I'm getting nowhere. And also I do notice the flywheels are quite wobbly. The mandrel isn't wobbly, the mandrel is quite straight. Again it's the same mandrel as it was for the pulleys. After a few attempts with the sandpaper I gave it up as a bad job. There are too many dings on the flywheel and some very very deep corrosion. In common with the pulleys the best way out of this is to do a light remachining of the flywheel. I'm using back gear on the lathe to slow it down. But even at this speed I'm hearing something I do not want to hear, the sound of a light chattering going on. Chattering can occur when the lathe bearings are not very good, but in this case the lathe bearings are fine. Chattering can also occur if the work is spinning too fast and there is too high a surface speed, but in this case the chattering is localised to a very small section of the flywheel. This flywheel is not running very true. The centre boss is running true, it's screwed onto a mandrel. So what I'm going to do is put some pressure on the boss by using a piece of wood and a live centre to make sure that the boss is pressed hard up against the chuck jaws. And as you can see the flywheel is still running out of true. As I mentioned in the previous episode, the crankshaft arrangement on this engine is a little weird. And I think what's happened, at some stage in the life of the engine, the flywheels have been damaged and bent and have run out of true. So someone's actually run a die down the crankshaft and the thread is very peculiar. It starts off okay, 5 sixteenths by 26 threads per inch but later on it wobbles about all over the place and the crankshaft is actually bent at the end. But when the whole thing is fitted together with the pulleys acting as a lock nut against the flywheel the flywheels do not run very much out of true. So what I'm actually trying to do is to lightly machine the outer surface to get rid of all the mess. I'm going to use some sandpaper for the inner and outer rim and when I finally assemble the engine, I'll have a quick look how concentric the flywheels are, and if they're not concentric, I will have to knock them back into shape. What I've been doing for the last few minutes is trying to get rid of the chatter marks from the flywheel, first of all by using file, and now using a piece of sandpaper with a piece of mahogany in between the sandpaper. Once I can get rid of this patch of chatter marks by using the file and the sandpaper, there's a good chance that a very fine cut at high speed will give me a clean finish. And as you can see and probably hear, the tool is now cutting the flywheel much better, no chattering at all and a good finish, which is what I need. This system appears to work quite well for gun metal and brass, but it doesn't work for cast iron very well. If you get chatter with cast iron, particularly around the rim of a flywheel, the best thing to do is to slow the back gear down to the slowest possible speed and take the finest cut. I'm now cleaning up the edges of the brass flywheel with the sandpaper with the piece of wood in between. So now as you can see we have one nice looking flywheel and one horrible flywheel and the horrible flywheel is the worst of the two. When I put the second flywheel into the lathe I could see that it really was miles out of true with the centre boss. I cannot really machine this until it's trued up somewhat. And although this can look a little bit brutal, I'm using a big hammer and a piece of mahogany to persuade the rim of the flywheel to come back into alignment with the boss. After a few carefully placed taps, it spins slightly better, or more than slightly better, a lot better. As I mentioned with the previous flywheel, if when I put the engine together everything is wobbly, then I'll revisit this and use a dial test indicator to get the flywheel exactly true with the boss but I'm still going to have a problem with this wobbly thread on the actual crankshaft. I haven't decided what to do about that yet. The good news after abusing the flywheel with the hammer is that it machined quite well. No hard spots on this one and no chatter, so it's a straightforward, very fine cut off the outer edge. Followed by the usual procedure with the file to remove sharp edges and the sandpaper with a piece of mahogany in between to clean up the outer rims. When the flywheels and pulleys are assembled on the crankshaft, 
everything looks okay, but the time will tell when the crankshaft is held in the main bearings. More about this in due course. It's painting time again. First of all, I'm cleaning up the parts. These are the crosshead guides, and I'm using a piece of 180 grit wet-to-dry sandpaper. Then I will paint them, then I will work down to a finer grade of sandpaper so the parts really shine. After this clip you're currently watching, I'm going to run the entire sequence of the painting in high speed. So here goes. These are the crosshead guides. And now, these are more crosshead guides being painted. There are quite a lot of them. And now for a little bit of light relief, that was a pulley being painted. And the rest of this is painting the flywheels. It's quite difficult painting flywheels, I always miss a bit but generally I give them more than one coat, so I get it on the second time round. Thankfully, the painting is almost over now. I'd just like to say, nurse, nurse, can I have my medication now, please? I'm hearing the voices again. And here they are. All the parts are painted and I can relax. So for the moment, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.